Okay, it's 525, so let's get started. Uh, I am Ryan Doherty, so I'll be your instructor for CSC 355. I hope in the, I'm in the right room. If you're not in CSC 355, you can walk out. We won't laugh at you much. Um, so I hope you're here to learn something interesting, well, a lot of things that are interesting, because this is probably the most important class you'll ever take. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a bit. So we'll meet here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 525 to 730. I will take the entire time every single day because I have fewer hours to lecture than a normal semester, unfortunately. And for that reason, uh, my office hours will be directly after class in here at 730 to 830. And what I plan to do during that time is pure problem solving sessions during that time. So if you have uh, questions for office hours, you can certainly ask them. But I plan to use them for problem solving sessions if you don't get enough out of the lecture. But sometimes, in, even in a normal semester, that's not enough. So we have what are called recitations, which are pure problem solving sessions. So Andrew, Andrew Dudley will be running those. Uh, and he plans on holding office hours at that time on those two days. We don't know where yet, but I'll let you be notified about uh, where that is. Uh, our teaching assistant this semester is Dylan, a good friend of mine. He took the class when I took it. A very smart guy. He will definitely help you if you have any concerns. And so he will meet uh, for office hours Monday, Wednesday at noon to 1 in Center Point. So uh, a little bit about myself. I am a PhD student here in theoretical computer science, hence why I'm teaching the class. Um, so the thing that I really like, I really like this material, but I like researching things about, uh, for example, software testing. What is the minimal number of tests to test a large software system? If you view my website, I have these huge tables, which, uh, which are used in research a lot. And th so that's the type of thing I like researching. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a uh, a few minutes of an elevator pitch about why this class is so important. I'll go zoom through the syllabus, and then we'll continue from there. So any questions before we move on? OK, so why did I say that this class is the most important class you'll ever take? Well, suppose that, so I'll ask you a question. How many of you, on purpose or on accident, have written an infinite loop in a program? So how did you actually check that out, that it really was an infinite loop? Or could it have just been running for a long time? So I have a program running on my computer. Can anyone guess how long it has been running for? It's still running right now. It's been running for three straight weeks. I'm not kidding. And I actually had to stop it halfway through, and I could run that for as long as I want. How do I know that it's going to run forever, or it's just taking a really long time? There's a, how would I be able to check that? Well, maybe what I can do is I can see in this part of this uh, loop, I see, OK, yeah, that condition, I, instead of checking less than, I checked greater than. And therefore, since I'm doing plus plus on iter each iteration of the loop, I'm therefore running forever. And I can check very easily that that's an infinite loop. But suppose I gave you this task. Given an arbitrary program, instead of just a specific one, an arbitrary program, can you tell whether or not that program will halt or not? And, what, and that question turns out to be no. There is no algorithm whatsoever that can check that in a finite amount of time. That seems pretty weird, right? That's something that we'll prove by the end of this class and a whole bunch of other things. And so you may be wondering, OK, are we going to spend this entire class uh, trying to prove things that we cannot actually solve? Well, 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 we'll build up to that by looking at various models of computation, types of ways of looking at what does computation really mean? What does it fundamentally mean? And from that, we can see what things can we solve with that particular model, and then we'll say, are there things we can't solve with it? And it turns out, yes. Then we'll try to ex uh, make that model even more powerful. See what things can be solved with that. Then we'll try to go a little higher and higher and higher until we get to a model called Turing machines, which is what real computers are based on. Okay? 
So that's fundamentally why this class is so important. It's developing models for real computers and understanding problems that people really care about, like halting of programs, for example, that really are fundamental to computer science. That's why this class is so important. Okay, so I have a little uh, course description here so you can read through uh, about why this is such an important class. I have a list of major topics of what things you'll be learning. So as we'll go through the course, uh, you'll start to see, okay, yeah, I understand what those things are. I don't expect you to know what those things are now, but we will eventually know them. And I have some tips for some uh, success right here, which will uh, aid you if you're struggling in some part of the class to, uh, if you want to try to attempt to resolve those issues. And uh, there are plenty of resources to help you. So lectures, attend them. Please, please attend them. Uh, office hours, please go to them because they are really helpful. Piazza is, I'm sure you all got an email. Piazza is a really great resource, so go on Piazza. And please, please, please go to recitations. You all have an assigned recitation section. Please go to it, ask questions. People who ask questions do better. Okay, so in order to do better, what should you do? Ask questions. Good. So, any, any questions so far? Yeah. Or will our examples look a lot like our problem sets? Uh, look like our problem sets in what sense? In terms of the answers that we're going to Yeah, yeah. So, the, so, I'll get to that really, but um, problem sets are supposed to help you prepare for the midterms, and the midterms are supposed to help you prepare for the final. Okay, and, it'll, and there'll be adequate preparation for it. No problem. Any other questions? Okay, so let's talk about administrative stuff. So, class is on Blackboard. I hope you know how to get to Blackboard. Please. <laughs> uh, so, it's actually not all on Blackboard. So, the only things that are really going to be on Blackboard are the problem sets, the actual PDFs that have the problem sets and some links, and uh, probably some study material stuff, recitations, syllabus, and schedule. So it's the main official part of the class, but it's not going to have everything. The things that are not going to be on uh, Blackboard are Piazza and Gradescope. So I'm going to try these out. I don't know if they'll work, but let's try them out at least. So Piazza is supposedly a good Q&A system. It's been working very well the past couple days. For those who've signed up, if you haven't signed up, please sign up. It's part of your grade. Please sign up. Uh, and please ask questions. Try to get a feel for asking questions and helping others answer their questions. Because communal effort is actually really important with understanding some of the material. So please sign up on Blackboard. It's part of your grade, as I've said. Uh, grade scope. So Gradescope is supposedly a much easier way and faster way for people to, uh, for things to be graded. So all your problem sets will be submitted on Gradescope. And it's super simple. You upload your PDF. You select which of, your, of the pages of your PDF correspond to what sections. It'll be really easy. And then you just submit there, and it's much easier to grade and much faster to grade, hopefully. So sign up on Gradescope. That's the only way that problem sets will be submitted, so it's also part of your grade. Okay? Uh, attendance. Um, I'm not going to take formal attendance in class. I please, please hope you come to class. I will be recording these, but I can't guarantee that they'll work. Uh, it's, it sometimes doesn't work in past semesters. It may or may not work. It seems to be working now. It may or may not work in the future. So please come, on, come to class. It's much better to learn in person than uh, over watching videos. Email, um, so I have this little uh, handy dandy table here uh, with uh, the type of question you may want to ask and the uh, person or people you want to contact. Most of these are a Piazza, but if you have like personal questions, send them to me. If you have like problem set grading questions, send them to the TA. We will be following these and we may or may not answer email if you don't follow this. So just follow the table, it'll be really, really simple. Okay. Grading for the class. Attend recitations, 50 points. I hope this is the easiest 50 points you'll ever get in this class. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. Does it matter which recitation? 
Uh, so there are, so please go to your own assigned recitation. But so there are five assigned recitations for each of the two sections. So 10 points each. So it's super simple. You go and stay for the entire recitation. You get the 10 points and it'll be reflected in Blackboard. Does that answer your question? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was your question? So is there multiple recitation sessions? Uh, there, you were assigned to one, yeah. and so uh, they're listed at the top of the syllabus. But uh, they're both on, they're both at five twenty-five to six twenty-five. One's on Tuesday, one's on Thursday in BYSC. So just go to that place at that time. So you can switch, for example. Oh, oh, uh, you can switch until tonight, okay. officially. Uh, because this is such a sh uh, short semester, it'll be hard to handle if you happen to go to a different one. So officially change. You have until tonight at midnight. Yeah. How do we officially change the schedule? Uh, you have to do it through ASU. So you drop the class and re-add. Uh, I think you can go to your My Issue and click Edit, and then you can edit the recitation section. There's a question over here. Okay. Any other questions? This is good. OK, cool. Uh, class participation, you'll get points for uh, answering and uh, asking questions on Piazza. So I'll, uh, you won't get these points until the end, and I'll figure out what's a reasonable amount of points for everyone to get. And so it's only 50 points. Problem sets, there are six of them. The first one, problem set zero, is out uh, because everything starts at zero. And uh, there are 300 points, so 50 points each. Super simple. Um, so the first problem set, problem set zero, uh, is already out. It is due Wednesday, I believe. Don't quote me on that. And it's about um, prerequisite material. So you should be able to answer all the questions, hopefully. If you have any questions, please ask them on Blackboard. Uh, no, uh, Piazza. Uh, two midterms, I'll show you the schedule in a bit. It's on Blackboard. Uh, and we will stick to those days and times. And the final is during the last lecture of the class. Okay. And here are the grade ranges for the class. Um, I hope to stay objective here, but I may, depending on the grades of the class, do some kind of curving, maybe. But uh, I, so I can't guarantee that I will keep these. So I may lower them or I may raise them. Why do you think I might raise them? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I won't do that. Something more, yeah, cheating. So I'll get to this in a second, but if there's cheating in class, then I can only assume everyone has cheated in the class, so therefore I have to raise the, the cutoffs for grades. Okay, so in order to keep these grade ranges, what should you not do? Thank you. See how simple this is? <laughs> Make my life easy, make your lives easy. Okay, problem sets. Um, so there was a question earlier about this LaTeX thing. Um, it's absolutely optional. So it, it's what makes these PDFs look so nice and make all the math symbols look nice. So you don't have to use uh, LaTeX. You can use Microsoft Word or whatever you want to use. Um, the problem is just that uh, typing all the math symbols might be a little challenging, but you're absolutely free to not use LaTeX if you don't want to. Yeah, go ahead. How do you feel about handwriting? Uh, handwriting. Uh, give it to your friend. If they say you can't, uh, uh, they can't read your handwriting, then I wouldn't do it. Because um, there's some awful handwriting I've seen in the past semesters. Uh, if you can write nicely, that's totally fine. But I'd avoid it if you can. But, but it's totally fine to handwrite. There's a question over here? Yeah, never mind. OK. <laughs> Any other questions? OK, uh, so I'm going to start this policy uh, called the I don't know policy. And the reason is that in past semesters, people have submitted uh, problem sets where they got literally less than 3%, even though they attempted every question. And it's because they literally have written like complete garbage on, the, on their paper. So, what I'm, so if you don't know the answer, just say so. Save our time, save your time. OK. So you get 20% partial credit if you write the words I don't know and literally nothing else, and then you're good. Okay. okay. 
It doesn't apply to exams at all, only to problem sets. Yeah, yeah, so I deliberately took it off exams. Only problem sets and not bonus problems. So uh, you can get 20% partial credit if you want to. Uh, so I will say this a little later on, but you have to write everything with, uh, by yourself. So there's absolutely uh, no collaboration in terms of writing up your own individual solution. I will get to this in a, a little bit. So if you write someone else's solution as if it you were, uh, were your own, it is plagiarism, for sure, by everyone's standard of plagiarism. So, well, maybe, maybe not some of you, but every, the ASU standard of plagiarism. All right, so uh, that's that. Uh, recitations, please go to recitations. It's only an hour, okay? And you get a bunch of help in those, yeah. 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 So, so, so I will talk about that. Yeah. Uh, about citing properly. Yes. I'll talk about that. Uh, exams. Uh, all closed book except for a cheat sheet of notes that is handwritten. So, why do I say handwritten? Uh, that, that is a valid under, uh, thing to say, but that's not actually true. Uh, well, it, it is hard to copy, but I don't actually care about that. You remember better if you write it? Exactly. You remember if you actually write it. So I've had the experience of having exams where I've written um, my uh, cheat sheet, and I never used it. Because I learned it as I'm doing it. Because I'm thinking about what I'm actually writing instead of just copying it from someone else. So if you, so I'm making it handwritten for the reason for you to understand the material better. That's my ultimate goal. I want you to understand the material. <laughs> okay? I'm not here as a big boogeyman or anything. I don't want to like infiltrate your lives or whatever. I want you to learn the material. That's what I really care about. Because not only do I love the material, but it's so important. Okay. Great appeals. Uh, everything can be appealed. Uh, but you have to do so within 72 hours of, because it's such a short class, of whatever is returned. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, problem set grade appeals when we start, uh, when we turn in problem set zero and how that process is going to work, but it's probably the same thing as everything else, which is if there's a grading rubric for that item, look at it. So don't just entirely ignore it. But go then talk to the TA, Dylan. And he'll ask you immediately, have you seen the uh, solution for, or the grading rubric for this thing? If you say no, he'll say, go see the grading rubric and stop talking to you. Okay? So if you have seen the grading rubric and you think that it's a valid reason, then you have to discuss why, with the TA, uh, Dylan, why you think that it was graded unfairly. If he thinks it was graded fairly, then tough luck. If he still thinks it's graded unfairly, then you have to bring it to me, whatever the item is, and then I'll take a look at it, and then I'll regrade the whole thing. Your grade may go up, may stay the same, or may go down. And the final grade, uh, the grade after that will uh, remain final. So no matter what happens after my grading, it's, you can't appeal again. Okay. So the reason is that if one point was deducted for some person here, then if it was deducted for everyone else, then it'd be unfair for everyone else. I want to be as fair as I can to everyone. Okay, so that's why uh, they, they do happen, uh, grading unfairly. I've seen it happen. It's totally reasonable to feel that something was graded unfairly, but you have to go through this process. Okay, and disability accommodations. If you have a disability accommodation with DRC, please, please, please let me know as soon as possible. I'm happy to grant any accommodation that you need, but I need to know as soon as possible so that I can, uh, I can make the appropriate arrangements, okay? Uh, I don't want to have the situation where I need to get a test to someone on the other side of campus within 15 minutes. I don't like that situation. It has happened to me before, so I don't want that to happen. Any questions about administrative stuff? 
Okay, my least favorite section, and hopefully yours. If it isn't your favorite, least favorite section, please listen right now. There is absolutely no uh, toleration of any academic integrity violation whatsoever in this class, any kind whatsoever. So no matter how minor the violation is, it will be reported to the dean. No joke. It will be reported instantly. So there are some items here that are copied from the uh, official ASU policy. Uh, if you don't have appropriate authorization to use a particular resource, you cannot use it. Okay? And I understand. You want to talk with everyone about the class. I understand. It's a great class. And what I also understand is you want to get general strategies from other people. That is absolutely okay. And I actually recommend, please get general strategies for solving problems for other people. I absolutely want that to happen. So participate on Piazza, talk with your friends in person or Facebook, whatever. Get general strategies for solving problems with people. In this class, wherever. But when you write your individual solution up, it's individual. Okay? It's in your own words. If you say if you what you do is you copy Wikipedia, which you should never do, but if you copy Wikipedia and say this was from Wikipedia on this address, copied verbatim. That is plagiarism, okay? Even if you cite it like that, okay? So what you need to do is cite the reference appropriately and write it in your own words, okay? Whatever it is. If it, and my favorite one on here is uh, this one. If it's on the graffiti in one of the BN, uh, BYNG bathrooms, cite it. If it, whatever resource you use, Cite it and write it in your own words. Copying it verbatim is plagiarism, as I said now twice. Okay? Uh, two exceptions are official course materials. Uh, I should add to this, Piazza is one of them. So if you any, use anything from Piazza, you don't have to cite it. That's perfectly fine. And any source for prereq material. So if you happen to know, uh, let's say, De Morgan's Law, for example, you don't have to cite it, other than saying maybe by applying to Morgan's Law or whatever. You don't have to cite a particular reference for that. Yeah. Um, uh, cite it in a way so that the TA can uh, look at look it up. Yeah. Uh, without any problem. So if it happened to be some web address that you happen to uh, see a particular thing from, give the full web address. For example, if you used it in a book, cite the book fully. Like ISBN number, title, author, everything. So that it's it, as easy for us as possible to see. Okay? Yeah? Uh, in your answer, uh, most likely. Yeah. Because in uh, Gradescope, you'll be selecting uh, which pages you want for each of the questions. So when we look, uh, when the grader looks at each individual question, they'll only see those pages. So make it on the pages of the particular question that you're working on. Okay? Okay, I think, yeah. So if you actually cite all your sources and say, this is where I got it from, and here's the whole solution in my own words, that's the important part, in my own words, there's zero penalty for that, none whatsoever. There is penalty for citing something copying it and pasting it. There is penalty for that. Okay? Have I made that clear? Yeah, so this is my first large class. I don't want any problems. I've had zero academic integrity violations uh, so far. What should that number be after this semester? Thank you. So, when you say uh, copy paste verbatim, what if there was like a statement, copy paste that, reference it, in other words, Copy and paste from where? So, so if I use a statement that is from, plagiarism. from a source, that is plagiarism. Even if cited and then reiterated? Yes. yes, because you're copying and pasting something that is not uh, originally from you. Okay. Uh, uh, the only um, uh, exemptions that are from the book, so if, if it's from the book, you can quote that verbatim fine. Or if it's a prereq material. Yeah. Okay. 
Example? That's prereq material, so that's fine. Yeah, so that's the second thing that's fine. Yep. So anything from MAT 243 and 310 is fine. So CLRS or any book you use for MAT 243, I say is okay. Okay. Any other questions about this? Because this is important. I want to have minimal headaches. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so this is what I said before. Professional ethical behavior, uh, I hope you know how to be professional and ethical. Uh, Title IX, uh, the description's here. I don't need to restate it. And university policies will obviously go by ASU policy. Okay. Any questions about the syllabus? I kind of breezed through. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk about that in the schedule. Any questions else about the syllabus? Yeah. Remember last semester, I'll talk about that when it gets closer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good point. Uh, email me about that. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions about the syllabus? Sweet. Let's get on to the schedule. So this is the schedule on Blackboard currently. Uh, I will be updating it as we move along. Uh, so what I plan to do is just talk about the introduction to the class uh, through the end of the day. And you can see everything that we need to do. Uh, that's what I plan to do. So uh, the second call, though, I guess the third column, is the days in which problem sets are due and when they come out. So problem set zero is out, and it's due on July 5th at midnight. And problem set one, I'll post on July 5th. And it'll be due uh, the 11th and so on until the end of the semester. And, yeah. <laughs> so you're debating on one minute. No, like is it two in the morning? Like, oh, 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 uh, uh, midnight, so 11.59, 59 p.m. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't be that mean. <laughs> uh, prop, uh, grade scope actually shows you the deadline. So it actually technically says July 6th at 12.00 a.m. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, try, I try to be nice about that type of thing. All right, so in the fourth column. Um, I've got a question. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, just to clarify, the problem set zero is due on the 5th because on the actual PDF it says. I changed it. Okay. Yeah, I changed it. I, I noticed that immediately and I changed it. Yeah, sorry about that. It's due the 5th. And, and we'll change the date if needed, but I'm sticking to the 5th for now. Cool. Uh, the last column, I have the relevant uh, pages of SIPSER. So if we're going along, oh, I forgot to show you. So this is the shiny, shiny, shiny book, uh, Intro Theory Computation by Michael SIPSER. Um, I'm going to be using the third edition. You do not have to get the book. You do not have to get the book. It's extremely pricey. Don't get the book if you don't want to. But if you are going to get the book, it's a really nice book to have. Yeah. Is it the same book you used last semester as well? It, it's exactly the same. Yeah, uh, unless there happens to be a fourth edition launched within the last two hours, <laughs> but there could have been. Yeah. Yeah, problem sets are always from the PDF. Uh, so this book is strictly optional, but you can use it and read along if you want to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that doesn't matter. So if you are going to have the Sipser book either as in uh, as an actual book or as an electronic book, you can read along. The touch screen doesn't work. Someone's going to get fired. 
Uh, and there's no way I can change that. <laughs> yeah, but it's displayed there. Uh, I probably shouldn't do this. System is cooling down and will be available again shortly. Anyone got elevator music? Someone will be hearing about this. As I said, someone's going to get fired over this. Uh, I can't uh, expect that. Anyone got any good CS jokes while we wait? <laughs> Sadly, I can't think of any. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, oh. There's a giant system on button, but the touch screen doesn't work. <laughs> Time to call people. <laughs> All right. Uh, Does anyone know the support number? Yeah, but there's no support number. I don't know what. I'm Andrew, by the way. Oh, nice to meet you. Uh, I also happen to work for these people at one point in time. Yeah. The, the entire display doesn't work. And they don't have the other option on this engine. Is this what you reset? Uh, I would guess, <laughs> but I don't know how to reset it. So here's the recitation leader, uh, Andrew, who will be doing your recitations. Hello. That is most unfortunate. Someone will be hearing about this. At least we got like half an hour in. <laughs> oh, you have, well, you actually have the full system shut up on here. Oh. Right here, so you can kill this entire unit. Reset? And yet, and yet. It's still stays on. Which means I work with something similar at Burger. See, we all help each other. So the yeah. touchscreen's not working. Yeah, literally nothing works. All of the things don't work. All the things don't work. So...
It's even funnier is that this is recording. Maybe it is registering this and it's just not showing. Maybe. Yeah, because I couldn't change the uh, connector. Uh, but because the display, it was locked on the on that. And so I just hooked into it. That's okay. why it was working. But now it's not. Uh, now it's not, yeah. Um, I'm wondering. Hey, Caitlin? What was this whole port? Uh, you might know how to apply. Uh, you know? Uh, I know GTO's number, but they might be able to give you classroom support. What's the uh, number? Uh, it's 855-278-5082. 5082. Ask the operator first. <laughs> All right. That's not okay. Did you add a Sorry. one? I tried. S just touch your mark. We tried 9 one 855-278? Oh, no. It's giving me the operator assistance thing. Try that. Try 9-1. What's the number? 855 278 5082. 82? Just go over here. Okay. Yeah, no yeah, thanks again. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the one. Thank you. Cool. They're Many? closed. <laughs> <laughs> they are closed at six p.m. on Fridays. It's been just now. <laughs> six <laughs> one. Yeah. How about we take a five-minute break? Uh, I'll see if I can help you figure this fun.